All right, I understand that we have our defense correspondent, Sifun Isien, who has been monitoring a situation in the Nigeria Republic and the ECOWAS stands on the coup that has happened there over the week. Uh, Sifun, I was going to ask you, you know, who is under pressure here, knowing that um, the deadline is tomorrow? That's the deadline for the coup leaders to step down and reinstate the constitution of power. I was, I'm asking, who is under pressure? Niger coup leaders or the ECOWAS? It's a test of will, as I mentioned in one of my reports. You know, um, the junta is uh, looking to see if uh, ECOWAS would back down on its resolution, you know, uh, on sanctions, which are already being implemented. Um, at the same time, ECOWAS, you know, is trying to send a strong message across the sub-region. And just like President Bora Tunubu has said, who would no longer be fashionable or permitted uh, on the continent. So you've had like three countries in the last three years, you know, uh, taken over by a junta and presently, you know, being run by a junta, starting with Mali and Burkina Faso and the likes. So should they elapse and the junta in Niger refuse to restore power to the democratically elected government? What we foresee is a situation where ECOWAS would impose more sanctions. Already, the country is under pressure economically. That's people are feeling the bites across the border. You know, so far, you know, the transportation of food and services across the border, for instance, from Nigeria to Niger, through Maradi, for instance, in Ela and Sokoto, all that has been cut, electricity has been cut off, and Nigeria supplies well over 80% of electricity consumed in Niger. So these things are biting hard into the fabric of Nigerians. So we foresee a situation where the regional bloc would impose more sanctions. But talking about use of force, that would be a lot of talk. Very interesting point there because a lot of people were scared as to, you know, if you check out some headlines uh, saying that uh, we go to war in the Niger Republic, uh, ECOWAS considering war in the Niger Republic. And thank you so much for putting this into perspective that military uh, um, that military um, stands, it's the last resort for ECOWAS. But another question I'd like you to clear for us is, um, we have porous borders here in Nigeria, and I know that the Immigration Service and the Customs Service are trying to do everything possible to ensure that um, the jihadist, which is one of the bane of contention in the Nigeria public, do not come into Nigeria, as you know that we already have security challenges here in Nigeria. So what do we see happen if Niger is able to stamp out jihadists completely from their country? What are the odds for us here in Nigeria? Niger is also battling jihadists. You know, the, 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 the jihadist issue is a challenge across the Sahel. And Niger is battling that with its resources. And it's also battling that under the multinational joint tax force, with which Nigeria is the leader uh, across the region, because Nigeria came up with that platform to combat Boko Haram within Nigeria and across the borders of Nigeria. But as it does stand with economic sanctions so far, we foresee a situation where many persons or Nigerians would be attending the several porous routes into Nigeria so they could breathe some air, you know, and have access to lots of food and services, which um, in, as a result of these um, the sanctions being imposed has not been flowing as they had intended. But the issue of, um, you know, having jihadists come across, definitely they would want to migrate to where they could have access to supplies. Um, but the Nigerian front had also activated its troops across those areas to ensure they don't come into Nigeria and continually add to our problems. That is what we know as we speak. All right. The people there seem happy. If you take a look at um, those in support of uh, the coup leaders, well, we'll get to know what this will mean for them and for us in the coming days our defense correspondent, Sifonisian, gives us an update on the situation. That's the political impasse in 
is your public. Thank you so much.